Hey everybody, my name is Tatro and I'm here today with Waves to show you Studioverse Instruments. Waves Studioverse Instruments is a playable instrument plugin that utilizes your favorite plugins from Waves to bring you a huge instrument preset library and the flexibility and power to build your own chains. You can even use third-party plugins with Studioverse Instruments. I'm going to be working in Ableton Live today, but Studioverse Instruments works in any DAW and actually what we create today with Studioverse Instruments can easily be shared across DAWs. More on that later. For now, let's dive right in. I'm going to drop in Studioverse Instruments from my plugin browser onto an empty MIDI track. On the left hand side here, we have a huge list, a huge preset library that we can start to preview. Or we can search by sound type, like a synth pad. And once we find a sound we like, we can just click that sound, sound downloads to our library, and we can instantly start playing. Before we get too deep into how Studio Verse Instruments works, I want to just take you through a few of the sounds. We've already just started scratching the surface with the amount of presets and the variations of types of sounds that are here in Studio Verse Instruments, but I'd like to give you a no talking sound demo of a few various sounds in Studio Verse Instruments. So as you can see, there is a diverse set of sounds right there in Studioverse Instruments, and there are lots more where that came from. But I'd like to now switch to showing you how Studioverse Instruments actually works and how we could work up to actually building our own instrument chain. As an example, I'm going to pull up a preset that I like, but is kind of simple the way it's constructed called Tenderheart. It's got this kind of cool effect where when you release, the chord is long, and when you hold down, it is short. But let's take a look under the hood and see what's actually going on here. At first glance, right away, we can see we have macro knobs, which will help us transform the sound in interesting ways, but with the easy access of all of these being tied to a macro. You might be thinking, well, what's so special about this? Well, let's take a look at this section right here. This is where the magic happens. Well, what's actually happening here is Studioverse Instruments is a way to combine all of your favorite Waves plugins and even third-party plugins into a single chain very easily through pre-made presets and through presets you make on your own. So we can see right here in this chain, we have access to Codex, a very powerful synthesizer which we can pin to our screen here with that little pin icon there. We can bring up the Q4, a sound sculpting tool. We can bring up the H delay. And as you can see, a lot of plugins go into the making of a sound like this. So it's really interesting to see all these plugins coming together to make a single sound. Though I did say I chose this sound because it was a simple example just to demonstrate that one click of a button and one loading of one preset in Studioverse Instruments saves you all the time and complexity of having to combine all these sounds yourself, and it basically does the work for you here. If we take a look at this chain, you'll notice we have some empty slots here at the end. So let's click the plus button on one of these empty slots, and you'll see we have a host of categories of things we can add, including 
third-party VSTs as well. But let me go ahead and search for one of my favorite Waves plugins, the J37. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our chain. And it's just as easy as that. It's loaded up the J37 tape emulation plugin. And I can go ahead and dial this in, add a bit more wow to the sound, give it a bit more of a lo-fi feel, push that input volume. and I've slightly transformed this sound, creating a new layer here on my chain. Now, with the presets available to us here on the left, as well as the plugins available to us here in the list in adding them to our chains, these results will filter by plugins you already have meaning Wave subscribers will be able to take full advantage of the entire library. But even if you just own some Waves plugins, you'll still be able to utilize Studioverse instruments. Now, as I mentioned, I chose a simple preset here to just get us to start thinking about how Studioverse instruments works. Let's now load up a more complex preset so I can show you how deep we can actually go here with Studioverse instruments. I'm gonna search up a beautiful sound called Tales of Abraxas. It's a beautiful ARP preset is how it's titled. Let's take a listen to how this sounds. I'm able to play these beautiful one note chords that are also in key. So let's see how it's possible to make such a complex sound here. First, you might have noticed in the top right hand corner of the plugin, we have the ability to set a key. This is going to be very important. This is sort of a global key setting for the plugin, as we'll use other MIDI devices like we see here in chords, which will take information from the global key setting. So if I click on chords just to see what's going on here, we're going to see a MIDI device so that I can play a single note and we'll hear a full chord and it will show us the notes that are sounding in that chord. Now, of course, this chord MIDI effect has its own key, but that will change according to our global key. Here in this list, we have different voicings. So beyond just a single key, what type of chords are we playing? This is good for making music in different types of genres. So the chords MIDI device is the first thing in the chain. It's sending all of those notes out to the next step in the chain, the instrument layer. Now here's where things get a little crazy. If I click the instrument layer, we can see there's more chains here in Studioverse Instruments. But don't get too worried, this isn't too confusing. This is just the same thing we've already been working with, just multiple chains. First chain in this instrument layer, we have the CR8 sampler. And you should also notice that within Studioverse Instruments, we can mix these individually, and I've got a solo button here. So I'm gonna solo the CR8 sampler so we can hear what that sounds like. So that's one layer of our instrument. Now I'm gonna to skip to layer three for a moment where we have another instance of the CR8 sampler. I'll pin this to the screen. And then we have a chorus stomp box effect, which I can also pin on top of the screen. Together, if I solo this chain, sounds like this. Now I did skip this second layer of the chain and that is because it is the most complex layer of the chain, but let's dive into why. First and foremost, you might have noticed looking around the plugin that we've got orange icons and blue icons. The orange icons represent MIDI effects and the blue icons represent instruments or audio effects. So following that, we have several MIDI effects here in the chain before we get to another instance of the CR8 sampler. I'll exit out our other CR8 sampler here so we don't get confused, but those MIDI effects are combining to make one really cool sound and I'll try to bring them all up on screen here all at once. Don't get too overwhelmed, but this is part of the beauty of Studioverse Instruments where it's bringing all of these layers of complexity to a single sound. And when you're loading up these presets, you're not even having to contend with the complexity if you don't want to. So we have four MIDI effects happening here on this layer, this single layer of a complex instrument. Let me solo this and play a note so we can see what's happening. We have notes arpeggiating. That's how I'm getting this effect from a single note. The sequencer, which is activating different tones. Key and scale mode, which is keeping us locked to C major. Again, that is speaking to the global 
key and scale that we have here in the main window of Studioverse Instruments. And then we have a transpose MIDI device that's just bringing us up an octave above. All of those MIDI effects are affecting the notes that are going into this instance of CR8 Sampler. And finally, the last device in the chain is a delay effect, a delay stomp box. And let's not forget, there's a chords device first in our chain before the instrument layer, which means each one of these layers is receiving the full chord. That's how we're getting such a rich polyphonic sound by playing a single key. So all three of those layers come together to make this single sound, which by the way, we can mix accordingly. We've got a mixer here. We can bring that initial pad sound down, the arpeggiation up, but these are actually already mapped to our macros here. Pads level, arp level, texture level. So in Studioverse Instruments, not only can we have a single master chain, but we can also get even more complex by adding instrument layers, which gives us the ability to add up to eight layers in a single instrument layer, just by pressing that plus button. I'm gonna subtract all those extra layers I just added. And you can see that utilizing MIDI effects in addition to multiple instrument layers results in a very complex sound. Let's take a look further down the chain past the instrument layers. We've got an exciter here. And then I'm gonna skip the parallel split for a moment and take a look at the SSL comp. Again, these are all Waves plugins that I have in my library that have automatically been put together into a beautiful instrument chain. Now in between here, we have another bit of magic of Studioverse Instruments, the parallel split. There's all different ways to route and layer sounds in Studioverse Instruments, if you didn't notice that already. But Parallel Split, as you might imagine, does a split of our signal in parallel. So I've got a reverb on one channel of this Parallel Split, which we can then change the layer of. So instead of adding reverb directly onto a chain, we've got it in parallel, which gives us a different sound than if we just applied it in sequence. That reverb layer is mapped to this macro here. If I put these side by side, you can see that the level of that reverb layer is mapped to a macro here. So it's really like plugins within devices, within layers. It's There's so many layers deep to Studioverse instruments. So while you could spend a lot of time just using pre-made presets from the library, here's how you would go about making your own sound. So I'm already in a preset right now, so I'm just gonna click that preset title and go down to full reset. This will give us a totally blank chain to start working with. Here in an empty slot, let's click the plus button. And it's important to remember that if you need to use any MIDI effects, they should have come before your instrument. So let's say I wanna make an arpeggiated instrument. I would find the arpeggiator under MIDI. And here we have all of our relatively familiar settings that we can change about an arpeggiator. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add an instrument to this slot. I can choose from any of my Waves plugins or third-party plugins. I'll go ahead and use Codex, for instance. And I think I wanna make something like a plucky sound. So I'll go ahead into Codex's preset library and find a pluck sound that I like. I'll choose plastic pluck, which sounds pretty good to me. Although there might be a couple things I want to change about the sound and map to a macro. So I'm gonna move Codex off to the side here and revisit the main window and click the assign button where now my macros are flashing. So if I wanna add something to macro one, I just press this plus button here, jump back into the plugin and click on the parameter that I want to map to that macro. I want chorus and we can see a red circle formed around chorus. That means it is now mapped to this macro here. I can go ahead and click off the assign mode and here, I've got control over the plugin's chorus. I may want to color the sound even more, so let's add an audio effect at the end of this chain. Let's look for a delay. I'll choose the H delay. I think that sounds pretty cool. I might like to map that dry wet knob to the macros. So I'll go ahead and assign that again. Macro two, bring up the H delay, click on the dry wet, and there we go.
And if I need to change the name of a macro, I can just double click the title and type in what I'd like to call it. Another way to access macro assignments is to just press the plus button on the macro knob. And here you can choose from a whole list of parameters that you can just easily map from the plugins that are already in your chain. So I'll add one final layer to this chain, my favorite, once again, the J37. And now that we've got that there, I can just click on macro three, find the J37, and I'd like to change the wow depth. Here we go. Not the most brilliant instrument chain, but I'm hoping it's something that can inspire you to go make your own, or at least you learned how to make your own while watching that process. One quick thing I wanna note here before I show you how to share this chain now with anybody, any other producer you want, you can right click on any device in your chain and remove or bypass or disable. You can also swap it out for something else. And I just wanna point out here something we kind of breezed past is the ability to add keyboard zones as another sort of MIDI effect that we can use where you can now lay out multiple zones in a similar way that we created instrument layers, which could be very helpful for performances if you wanna split your keyboard into having separate instrument sounds. You'll even notice that since I swapped in the keyboard zones there for the arpeggiator, it automatically put the codex layer into the split, which I think is pretty convenient. But I wanna actually get rid of that and I'll just click the undo button up here. And now we're back to that original state. Let's go ahead and save this preset. And this is something that's really cool. I'm able to save it locally, of course, so I can use it whenever I want, but I can also publish my chain on Studioverse. So I'm gonna give my chain a name. I'll just call it Plucky Arp for now. And we can add tags. And these are tags that are already being used in Studioverse instruments. So I can tag it Plucked Instruments. We can also tag it by genre if we want and a whole host of other kinds of tags. We can add a custom image that we create ourselves to our preset, or we can select from the stock images that they have here for us to be able to use. I'll just choose synth for now. And I can just give it a little description, a simple plucky synth. Another very cool function is that I can record an audio demo, which will live with the preset. And then I can choose to either keep it private or publish it on Studioverse. What's cool about this and all of the presets in Studioverse instruments is if I go find that preset now, I can click the three dots and click share preset and it's simply shareable via a link. If you have a community you'd like to share your sounds with or if you have a friend you're working on a project with, you can just shoot them a link. They can load it up in Studioverse instruments with just a click of that link. That goes for any of these presets. Oh, what preset did you use? Oh, I used the PD Majestic Pad. Here, I'll send you the link. And that is another part of the magic of Studioverse instruments. Any producer in any DAW can open that link and have your instrument loaded up in seconds in their project. Now I've been working on a little house tune that you're hearing right now here, and every synth that you hear is from Studioverse Instruments. I'm gonna break this track down and talk more about Studioverse Instruments over on my channel. You can find the link to that down in the description, or you can also find a link to download Studioverse Instruments completely for free and start using it today. But for now, that's gonna be it. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been Tatra for Waves. Have a good one.